Jeremiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 5. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he wrote these words in a book at the dictation of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch. You said, Woe is me, for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. Thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built, I am breaking down, and what I have planted, I am plucking up, that is, the whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Seek them not, for behold, I am bringing disaster upon all flesh, declares the Lord. But I will give you your life as a prize of war in all places to which you may go. We usually walk into situations or set out on paths with certain expectations. One goes to medical school expecting to be a doctor. Another goes to law school expecting to be a lawyer or perhaps even a judge. When God causes our paths to deviate from our expectations, it can often leave us confused, frustrated, or even discouraged. The Bible doesn't give us many details about Baruch. We're never told why he joined Jeremiah in the work or what his expectations were, but I like to imagine that Baruch recognized the power Jeremiah had and the importance of his calling. Thoughts of the great prophets of the past, Moses, Samuel, Elijah, or Isaiah, were probably passing through his mind. There might have been an expectation to see great miracles and repentance, the nation of Judah turning from the sinful worship of idols and coming back to a proper worship of the one true God. Finally, after years of spiritual decay and foolish kings, Jeremiah's words and power would bring people back to the truth. And maybe, just like Elijah's power passed on to Elisha, Jeremiah's power might rub off on Baruch just a little. I wonder what was going through his mind the day King Jehoiakim burned the scroll he had carefully scribed and faithfully read before the people of Jerusalem a scroll that had been written in the hopes that it would bring people to repentance. All that work, all that hope, dashed in an instant. Was this really what Baruch had signed up for? To spend his life trying to save people, only to watch them die from their own foolishness? Jeremiah 45 marks a fascinating transition in the book of Jeremiah. The previous section deals primarily with the events surrounding the conquest of Judah by Babylon the end of Zedekiah's reign, and the issues the Israelites faced afterwards. After chapter 45, we see the various judgments God pronounces on the various nations, Egypt, Moab, and even Babylon. But first, God has a message to Baruch. We're not told exactly why Baruch is feeling sorrow and despair in this moment, but maybe it was coming to the realization that he wasn't going to see the great miracles and repentance he was hoping for. With King Jehoiakim firmly rejecting the words from God, it was clear the course of the nation wouldn't change. They were headed for judgment and destruction. What was the point of even trying anymore? In this moment of discouragement, God reaches out and answers Baruch. His emotions, his frustration, his sorrow, they aren't being ignored. God hears him and wants to respond. I was 15 years old when I received my first diagnosis of cancer. Up until that point, I had a lot of expectations of what my life would look like. I was a 4.0 student in school, good at math and science, and was looking forward to the start of high school. I was getting ready for Thanksgiving with the expectation that I would be together with family. Thanksgiving Day, we got the news. Stage 4 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma spread all throughout my body. Pick a body part, and I had a tumor growing there. In a single day, my entire life turned upside down. For the next 12 months, I would be dealing with chemotherapy treatments every three weeks, with regular scans and blood tests, a weakened body and immune system, and the realization that I wouldn't be able to be the strong, top-scoring student I was used to being. It took all my strength just to make it to school for a single 45-minute class. I was angry, frustrated, and discouraged that my life wasn't going the way I had expected it to. I was 37 years old when I received my second diagnosis of stage 4 cancer. 
I had beaten lymphoma after a year of chemotherapy as a child, but now I was faced with a rare incurable intestinal cancer. Once again, my life is derailed, and I don't know what the future holds. For two years now, I have continued to go through chemotherapy treatments every two weeks, going through great pain and exhaustion. There are days when it's a challenge just to eat and drink, and as of now, there's no known way to beat this cancer. I could be doing this the rest of my life. In those moments, it's normal to cry out to God in the same words of Baruch. Lord, you have added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. What is particularly interesting about this passage is that God addresses Baruch's sorrow and emotions before going into the details of the judgments to come on the various nations. Out of everything there is to talk about, God's hurting child is the priority. God sees Baruch's suffering and seeks to encourage him, and that takes priority over the judgments to be declared on the various nations. Part of God's response may not seem like much of an encouragement. God does acknowledge that things are going to be broken down and uprooted, but also reminds Baruch that these are things that God himself built and planted. This might remind us of interactions like the one God had with Jonah in Jonah chapter 4, verse 11, when God reminds Jonah that God has pity on all things he has created and doesn't want to see them destroyed. Baruch may feel sorrow, but perhaps God feels it to even a greater degree, given that these are all things built and planted by him. God also has an interesting warning to Baruch. Don't seek great things for yourself, because everything is coming to ruin. Perhaps Baruch thought that his working with Jeremiah would ultimately give him some level of prestige or admiration, and some of his despair may be coming from the realization that this won't be happening. God tells Baruch that he won't be seeing those great things, but also gives him a promise. Even though everything is going to be crashing down, God will be protecting Baruch and seeing him through to the end. As Christians, this can be an important reminder to each of us. As we live in a world that is coming to ruin, we often won't achieve the great things we were hoping to gain. Our plans fall apart, often due to circumstances far outside of our control. And as we cry out to God, saying that sorrow is being added to our pain, God reminds us that our lives will be protected as a prize of war, a prize that Jesus won with his victory over death on the cross. We are a precious prize that Jesus has sacrificed for, and while we don't have all the great treasures and fame that this world offers, we have something far more precious waiting for us in heaven. Even as Baruch mourns, his work continues to impact people who came long after him. He stayed faithful to God's command. He never sought great things for himself, and today we rarely hear about him. I don't think I've ever heard a sermon preached about Baruch, and if you ask the average person about him, they'll probably say they've never heard of him. Yet the only reason we have Jeremiah's words today is because of the work Baruch did. He never became famous, but was instrumental in ensuring that God's word was passed down for future generations. He never saw the full fruit of his labor, but we all benefit today because of it. After so many years of battling cancer, I often find myself crying out to God in the same words of Baruch. Why do I have to go through this much suffering? Yet one of the encouraging things I get to experience during the suffering is finding out that my life has had an impact on people I haven't even met. People who have read or listened to a sermon or a message I've put together and found hope even as I suffer with pain and exhaustion. I'm reminded that I'm not here to seek great things for my life, but rather I'm a prize that's destined for heaven. We're allowed to mourn and cry out to God just like Baruch did, and just like Baruch, our lives will have an impact on others that we might not ever see this side of eternity. But most importantly, we're a prize that Jesus fought for and won. So let that knowledge sustain us as we go through the sorrow and the pain of life.